names, but hello, Elijah. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good, and you, ma'am? I'm very good, thank you. All right, Elijah, give me one minute. I'm going to go through the comments because I see a couple of people coming in and dropping comments. Happy March to everyone. Yes, Mallory agreed. I hope you guys are all enjoying the new month. The Mosers, Minty60, official Kira. Thank you all for being here. All right, Elijah, I gave them a little preview, but can you go ahead and give them the full introduction? Absolutely. So my name is Elijah Lee, and I am a child youth actress. I am 13 years old, and I started my journey back in 2018. Some of you may know me from the Kelly Clarkson show, and others may know me from the Marvel Hero Project. I understand that a lot of you understand Jaquil Thompson, who is also on the Marvel Hero Project with me. Right now, you can see my comments. And this was a huge part in my career because this taught me so much about not only recognition, but also the power that our young people have. I've been marching for four years now. And within those four years, I have been able to be a voice on youth empowerment and child youth. And how it is our job as a community to stand behind our young people. How it's our job as a community to band together and help our young people out. Because I am a youth activist, I was able to be able to march for about four years now. We are actually coming up with my very fourth annual Child Abuse Awareness event. And I am so excited. It is a virtual event just so we can keep everyone safe. But over this time, I have had an opportunity to reflect and just think about that I was about 10 years old when this journey started. And now I'm 13. It's this crazy thing that how much our young people can do in just a few short years. Thank you so, so much, Elijah. All right, really quick, I'm going back to the comments. The Mosers, hello. Skylar Sweet Snacks, thank you for joining us. And Lauren, that's my cousin. I just got to give her an extra special shout out. Thank you for joining us. How to read her comment. Hey, beautiful cuz, just wanted to jump in for a quick minute because you're beautifully awesome for all you're doing. So proud of you. Love you, cuz. Thanks for stopping by. All right, now, Elijah, before we get to more questions about the march and your work, I got a question about Marvel for you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Marvel, this one's a fun one. Marvel has Avengers. Marvel also has X-Men. Now, only one can stay, Elijah. Which one stays? Which one goes? I think I'm going to have to keep the Avengers and throw out the X. I mean, this is very controversial topic, but I think I'm definitely going to have to stick with the Avengers. I mean, there's a lot more power in there. There's a lot more stamina, and I think overall they had to fight. I'm putting my money on the Avengers on this one. <laughs> you know what? I'm not surprised that you said that. I mean, recently, I feel like the movies coming out have really been very Avengers heavy, so, you know, everybody's <laughs> on Avengers right now. <laughs> All right, so now let's talk a little bit more about your work and the march that's coming up. First of all, Tell us, what made you want to focus on child abuse as an activist? Yeah, so when I was in the very first grade, I had a friend tell me about their abuse. And this was hard for me. I hadn't come to terms what child abuse was at that time. I hadn't had time to comprehend what was going on in our world. And this goes back to any issue. I hadn't understood sexism. I hadn't understood racism. And But child abuse was a especially hard because I myself was a child and I grew up in a single parent household with people that loved me to death and to think about there were young people who went home and not only did they not experience love but they experienced hate and a lot of that hate was simply because they were able to or because they were innocent and because they were vulnerable or almost like they hit them because they could and because they can and to me that was so unjust I think I felt like I was powerless at that point. I felt like I couldn't do anything. And so I went home and I talked to my mom and we got that person help. But that lit a fire under me. I felt a sort of passion come from that. I, sort of, I felt a sort of purpose rise from that occasion. And so from there, I decided I had to do something. I decided I had to make a change. I decided that I, could, I couldn't sit by and just let this continue to happen. I couldn't let my fellow young people go through this any longer. And so I took the power and resources and knowledge and power and passion from people like John Lewis and Malcolm X and Dr. King and my ancestors, people who rose up 
people who truly made a change in our country. And I use that to guide me on my path. I use that. People like John was special because he was a young person when he started marching. He was a young person when he got involved. He showed me that our young people have power. He showed me that our young people are capable of so much more work than what society chooses to believe. And he showed me that it was my job to use my voice to be the change I wish to see, like Gandhi said. And so from there, I decided to leave my very first annual child youth awareness march. And it started as this fake idea on a little notebook. And I think what was really hard was that it took me three months to actually get there because I had to advertise, I had to get contact with our local police department, I had to get permits. There was a lot that I had to do to be able to march. And there's education and knowledge that needs to be involved to be able to march. And so once I was able to do those things, though, I was able to have over 200 people in attendance at my very first march. And I was 10 years old, and so that was crazy to me. And then the next year, I had over 250. And then at the most recent year, which is the third one, I had over 450 people in attendance. And still today, saying those numbers just puts me in awe just at how quickly our community could band together. Puts me in awe is that how quickly our community could recognize the power in our young people. I think it just says a lot that once our young people put our minds to something, and once our young people can set on something, we will get it done. And we will make that change. And I think that that is what my marches are all about. Not only about childhood, but also about youth empowerment. To show that our young people are capable of so much more than what everyone chooses to believe. That our young people are capable of juggling school and athletics and extracurricular activities while still going out and marching and using their voices. That our young people have been able to manage their grades but still change our country for the better. And I think that that's something that my marches have shown me. And I hope it also serves as an opportunity for other young people and have inspiration for other young people to get involved in their own communities. Yeah, 100%, Elijah, I agree with you. And I'm going to take a break, and I'm just going to check in with the comments, because I see a lot of comments here. Minty60, you're going to the top. They're talking to you, Elijah, okay? <laughs> Who else is here? Jai Bear 123 Skylar Sweet Snacks, great job. People Pop Land, shocked and amazed at what you're doing. I mean, Kumi Crochet, that's actually another friend of mine. I know who that is too. Wow, like you're flooring these people, Elijah. The work that you're doing is really incredible and inspiring. So next, I want to ask you, what is it about having a march that attracted you? I mean, there are lots of different kinds of events that you could have pl planned. So what is it about a march that was so appealing to you? Yeah, absolutely. So I did grow up in a church, and I grew up in a very religious household. So we had those fish fry cookouts, and we had those types of things. And so I could have easily just advertised an event. I could have sold pamphlets, and there was girl scouts all around our neighborhood, and I could have gotten involved that way. But something about a march just inspired me. So I'm going to look back on our history and see things like the March of Washington and the Children's Crusade, peaceful protests, people of marches that made a change in America. And to be honest, it wasn't about the initial message that it sent off, but instead it was about that you saw multiple people gathered in one spot all for one reason. And even if I could get 25 people, I would be happy because from there we're sending a message. We're sending a message that 25 people understand what child use is, that 25 people are ready to recognize what child use is, and most of all, that 25 people are ready to raise up our young people protect our young people and so that march is showing me what we produced in america i also think it was overall really cool to be able to kind of take that point from the past to the present and just kind of reincarnate that a little again and i have been to previous marches like the more marches in north carolina a couple of others just in my local community and to feel the energy there it was something astounding but it was also something that I knew a lot of young people wouldn't get the chance to become and participate in it's just because uh, they wouldn't advertise as much or wouldn't get to many places. So I used me being a student and I was able to advertise in my school and I was able to advertise in places that only a student could really have access to. And then I could share that energy. I could share that feeling. I could most of all share that passion with so many other kids who are waiting to be involved. 
That is super smart, right? To use your access to places that other people can't get to to advertise that event. So smart, Elijah. And also, I have to say, I really love that concept that you mentioned where you want to take this idea from history because marches, of course, have lots of historical context. But we also can reimagine that old thing into something new that works for us today. And that's exactly what you're doing. I love that. So let me check in with these comments because there's lots of comments flying today. By the way, I'm going to tell you people that are watching, if you're really loving this and you know someone else who you think might love it too, look down at the bottom of your screen. There's that little airplane. You can send this to someone or invite them to come enjoy this with you. Autistic Swag, thank you for joining us. Linked by Nine, Minty60 had a comment. When you march, it gets people to pay attention. Do you notice that, Elijah? Absolutely. I mean, you can have those stands outside of your church. And at some level, you're almost limited to the people that are standing outside of your church. But to say you have a march in the newspaper was something that I definitely found attractive people. It piqued their interest to say, I mean, that's something you read about in history books. And that's never something that you can imagine 2018, 2019, 2020 even, in a time where we knew technology would be an immediate way. But to be able to actually go out there and march and use signs and media, it was something that not a lot of people expected. So I definitely think it helped. Yeah, awesome. I mean, I remember doing that when I was a, a much younger person <laughs> a couple decades ago, but you're right. Like recently, I definitely haven't done anything like that. So I love that you're kind of bringing that feel back. Um, a couple of the comments here I don't want to miss. First, from Lauren, so young but so mature in the efforts of marching for something worthy. Keep inspiring and being brave and unafraid, Elijah. And there was also a comment here from Minty60, a former foster mom. And, you know, definitely the foster system, you know, sometimes there are issues with abuse there as well. So I'm sure that you're definitely familiar with that. Daily Mac, I hope I said that correctly. They're with you, Elijah. And... Julie, okay, I'm trying to get these names right. Give me a second. Julissa Fleming, Teresa Sr., and Running Glasses. Thank you for joining us, guys. All right, Elijah, you want to tell us a little bit about the march that's coming up? Yeah, so my march is coming up. It's the fourth annual Child Abuse Awareness event is what we're kind of trying to shift it to just because, unfortunately, because of COVID, it can't be a march. And our first priority is just to keep everyone safe. I want this to be an event where young people could come and actually participate in and not always have to worry about being in a mask. And I know everyone is tired of virtual learning and what their work promising. I just got finished with school a minute ago. And so I'm tired of it a little bit myself too. But right now we all have the opportunity to make a change. Right now we can take this opportunity, log on your computers, log on your phones, log over to whatever you can. Just take this minute to be there. It is March 6th from 1 to 2 p.m. The Zoom account and Zoom link and everything you can find is on my page, which I think you can see on the Instagram Live, but it's also Elijah underscore for justice underscore Lee, and it's all right there. Um, for those of you who are a little bit more involved in Facebook, it's just Elijah Lee is my handle, and so, but you can see all of that in my page. But overall, I hope this event is not only a time where you can learn about child abuse, Hear from some amazing speakers, such as Prosecutor John Katami, about what child abuse is, and educators such as Ms. Tammy Sutton, who is the founder of the HIP schools in North Carolina, about what child abuse is. But also, you can hear from some amazing supporters, such as Governor Ralph Northam, Senator Mark Warner, and people such as Kelly Clarkson. I think it should be a time when that not only we recognize child abuse and also all the lives that it took in, but we also take a minute to recognize that our young people are strong. We recognize that our young people are powerful. We recognize that our young people are ready and capable to make a change. We are the new generation. We are Generation Z. And it's time that we come up there and time that we make a change. And it's time that we rise to the occasion. Remember, you know, one for all, we all fall. But when one can rise, we all rise. And I hope this marks the opportunity for us all to rise in unison. Absolutely. Can I just say, Elijah, when you speak and you're like really passionate, I start to get chills a little bit. Has, it, has anyone ever told you that? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think I've gotten that one yet. <laughs> you're, you're a great speaker. Very eloquent. Very clear. I love it. Um, so I just want to run through those, uh, those details one more time. So this event is on March 6th, which is Saturday, correct? Yes. It's the first Saturday in March. Okay. From 1 to 2 p.m., that's Eastern time? Yes, it is. 
perfect. And if you want information about how to attend, it's just a Zoom link. There's no charge. Is that correct? It's free to attend? Correct. All you got to do is jump on any device. I mean, I'm not really educated on how Apple Watches work, but just get on your MacBook, your Chromebook, anything. You can jump right on. You'll go into an initial waiting room, but come 1 o'clock, we're just going to welcome everyone in. What I think is personally really cool about the Zoom is that we have such a possible job in time. He is all the way in California. And so that's an opportunity that we may not initially always get. And so please feel free to interact in the chat. We're still working out on finding like Q&A ways. And so, but we should be able to have that set up. And so it's just going to be a time where you can interact with people. But yeah. Awesome. And if you want the information, like the Zoom information, you can go to Elijah's Instagram. You can go to my Instagram. Post it on, you know, the post that I put out on Sunday. It's right there. You can just swipe and find it. And you can also go to his website to support. There are some things that you have, like T-shirts for the March, correct? Yeah, so we also have we have T-shirts that are ready for the March. You can find those at our website, which is IncredibleElijah.com, which happens to be named after my comic and my episode on the Marvel Girl Project. So, yeah, you can go there for some shirts. We also have our GoFundMe, which is another way that you can support that a lot of that money will end up go to you know, for the for the march, excuse me, for the marches, the Carol Voices campaign, but it also goes to funding future projects, such as the hospital project, which is an amazing thing that I've been able to do. I'm really, really proud of it. And what we have been able to do is to transform a very dim, uninviting, dark hospital room into a place where kids can feel invited, a place where kids can have fun and be happy. It's a place where abused children or children who have just been found in abusive situations can go to just relax and breathe and be a kid for a second, which is something that you definitely need after you have just seen offices arrive at your home. And so that is actually having just a couple of updates. We're going to visit that on Wednesday. And so definitely tune in to March to see some amazing details on that coming up. Awesome. Okay, I love all that other extra information you just dropped on us. That was great. Um, all right, so first, autistic swag. You're saying you want to join in. Go to Elijah's Instagram or go to my Instagram. You'll find the information for the March and you can join in. If you go to Elijah's Instagram, click the link in his bio. You can go get your March t-shirt and all the other swag that he has there. Um, okay, I do have one more thing I want to talk about. Do you have a little more time? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay, so what are some of the most exciting things that have happened since you started on this journey as an activist? Um, that, that over time has become a pretty lengthy list. I think one of the top ones definitely has to be Kelly Clarkson. I remember the first time we went, it was very, like, it was very scheduled out. It was very easy going. Um, that was also one of the very first times I've ever been able to travel. And so that was really fun. Um, TSA became something that stressed me out very quickly just because I'm someone that, like, likes to have things in order. And then it's also, like, there's a prize, like, searches. And I was just, like, this is a little stressful for me. But so that was exciting. But the second time, I think we got a call at 11 o'clock p.m. on like Tuesday. And we had to fly there, had to be on the Thursday morning show. And so my entire house was scrambling to pack our bags. We got a plane ready to go at 6 a.m. in the morning. Got to get to the hotel, got to check in. It was all a little hectic, but it was something that I definitely adored. I'm someone that is a sucker for the chaos of a house at those points in time. And so to see everyone just kind of scramble, I mean, we had, I was going up to my mom with like a bunch of hangers in my hand, just having her check out all my different outfits. And so it was definitely hilarious. But another time had to be, I believe it was like my second more march that I attended. And I was going up to just wanted to meet Dr. Barber because he's personally one of my heroes, who is someone that's constantly still making a change in our country today. And he, um, I remember going back to meet him. And then they just opened the door, and so we were able to get in. I guess they kind of, like, recognized me from other people. And then from there, before I knew it, I was rushed on top of the stage. I was getting a really quick elevator speech in front of, like, 5,000 people. And so it was, it was again, I'd say chaotic and a little hectic. But I was so blessed to be able to have it. But a time that probably wasn't as chaotic and hectic had when I received my first letter from John Lewis. And that was not even mental to me, just because he was my hero. He was a personal favorite of mine. And it was just, it was a really overwhelming day, to be honest. But, I mean, I could go on for hours. But, yeah, so those are just a couple. 
That's awesome. So you met some really interesting people and some yeah. people that you've looked up to for a while. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Elijah. So we're going to start to wrap this up. I know there are some people here now who weren't here at the beginning. So could you please introduce yourself one more time? Absolutely. So my name is Elijah Lee. I am a 13-year-old child abuse activist, and I'm here just to spread the word about my fourth annual child abuse awareness event, which is on March 6th from 1 to 2 p.m. All you have to do is check my page or Green Tracer's page, and you'll be able to see everything you need to get on the event. No RSVP needed, no money needed. All you got to do is jump on, support our youth, support our cause, and eventually cause an end, call for an end, call for a change against child abuse. 100%. And let me ask you this. So, Belle, hello, sweet treats, hello. Sorry, some people just dropped in. I got to give them some love. Spam key, who else is here? Uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody, but hello to everyone who just joined us. So I have a quick question that I'd like to ask before we get some final words for you. If there is somebody who's watching this Instagram live who maybe they know someone who's struggling with abuse, or maybe it's them, maybe they're struggling with abuse, what should someone do in that position? Yeah, so I think the first thing that you can do is just find someone that you are comfortable with. Right now, our main priority is to keep you safe and to make sure you understand that you are supported, to make sure you understand you are loved, and to make sure you understand there are people there for you. To go to a teacher, a principal, or even a close friend. Now, if you are a teacher or a friend or anyone that knows that someone is being abused, go to the authorities. It may not always be the police, but someone that's just a little higher up than you, like such as a principal or someone also in your workplace. Go to someone that can get help. Right now, that child's life is in your hands. Right now, you are capable of making a change for this kid. That kid is so much more than what people think they are. They are worth so much more and can do so much more than what we limit them to. So right now, we have to get them help. Once we get them help, there's going to be a process of supporting. There's going to be a process of loving. It's going to make sure they understand that you have a voice, one, and then two, making sure that you understand there are out, people out there people like myself, people like my family, and people across our entire country who are just here to care for you, who are to support you in all of your endeavors and anything you need. And so to all those who experience abuse, have all gone through abuse or know someone abuse, just get help and also understand that you are loved, understand that you are cared for, and understand that we are here to back you up. I love it. I don't even have anything to add to that, nothing to add necessary. Elijah, give us your final words, if you please. So I have a quote that I always end on, and it's remember that when one falls, we all fall. But when one rises, we all rise. Right now, it is crucial and important that we take every day to rise up. There are going to be days where we fall. There are going to be days that we have those values. There are going to be days where we have those failures, to be frank. But there's also going to be days where we can rise up. There are going to be days where we can't overcome things. And it is up to us to get through those. You are so much more than what society limits you. You are so much more than your skin color. You are so much more than your gender. You are so much more than your past. And right now, you have the opportunity to rise. So we can all rise again. So take it. Seize the occasion and make a change. Be the one who rises so we can all rise again. Elijah, your words are so inspiring. I hope that somebody out there watching, even if it's just one person, I hope that they were touched by this interview today. I want to thank you so much for joining us. I am going to share some more information this week about your event, so my followers don't forget. But you guys that are here watching right now, remember, go to Elijah's Instagram. You can find that Zoom information. It is totally free. All you have to do is show up to the March on Saturday. Yes? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, Elijah, thank you so very much. Have a good evening. And I'm really going to try to show up on, on Saturday. I just don't know how my schedule is going to play out, okay? But hopefully I'll see you there. Thank you. Thank you so All much right. for this opportunity. You're welcome, Elijah. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. And all right. We'll